uh, coming in and getting settled. I hope you have your uh, windows down. See some of you with the sunroof open. Everybody do me a favor. Stick your arm out the window and just wave where you at. Amen. Just let me know. Praise the Lord that you're here. We're thankful. Amen. It's good to see each of you this morning. I'm sorry for letting you start. It was hard for me to break away to, to uh, say hello to everybody. Trying to anyhow. Uh, at a distance. I do want to make a couple of announcements before we start this morning. We do uh, uh, want to say that we are glad you're here, even some of you that are visiting this morning and coming out with us. We're, we're so thankful for you. But I, uh, I do want to uh, just encourage you, please. We want to do this again. Should Jesus tarry, we want to do this again next Sunday, Easter Sunday. And so uh, we are asking you, let's please abide by the policies that have been laid before us. Stay in there in your uh, vehicles and uh, amongst uh, your groups that are there. And uh, after service this morning, uh, the ushers are going to help to just get people directed out of here. But we appreciate you getting in here and getting set up. A little bit later in the service, uh, when we come to receive uh, the tithe and the offering, the ushers, they'll be splitting up through the parking lot and they'll be coming to the driver's side window. And uh, you can do, do the giving right there uh, out of the driver's side window. And so just to let you know about that, if there is an emergency in the sense of a bathroom emergency, uh, you can come over here to the side and come into Castle Hall to utilize the restroom. But we are asking that uh, we do this at a minimum and please really only if it is an emergency. But we do want you to know that there is something there available for you. But uh, we just thank God for you. I don't know about you, but I've come today to worship. It's Sunday morning and we just want to get in and let the Lord have His way, minister and move in our hearts. And uh, I tell you, this is a uh, this is a first, I know, for all of us. I told somebody last week, I said, I've preached under some camp meeting tents outdoors, but this is the first time that I've ever preached to cars in the parking lot. But needless to say, I'm thankful this morning to see some faces and, uh, and so we can smile at one another, wave at one another. But above all, we just want to have church. I believe he'll meet us right here, even in this very parking lot. And so I'm going to ask you this morning, let's just lift our hands to heaven right there where you are. And let's just call upon the name of the Lord. Let's believe him to move today. Come on, church. Let's pray together. Father, we glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for this day that we've had, the day that you've made. And we've come to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your power. I thank you, Lord, for these that are here to join us today. Those that are watching a uh, live stream this morning. We pray that you would bless. We pray, Father, even now your presence, power, and anointing would move in our hearts and lives. If we have gathered to worship, Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, to come together to get the word of God, to pray together. Father, we thank you for your blessings. And Lord, truly, we ask you to move in a special way. Challenge our hearts today. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you for all that you do. Right where you are, there in your cars. Come on, church. Won't you lift your hands? And won't you tell him this morning, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you today. I thank you, Lamb of God. I praise you, Father. Thank you for your presence. Even now, we sense. We've come to worship you. We've come to lift you up. Oh, let's enter in. Let's sing together, worship together. Amen. As the singers minister this morning. This morning. Why don't you lift your hands this morning and give it praise. With my hands lift.
because you're here today, we can lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. We can worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas was in the jail, but they worshiped you, Lord, and you came into the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you love him this morning? Hallelujah. If he'll come, everything will be all right. Thank you, Jesus. He's here this morning with us. Sing it this morning. of the Lord. It doesn't matter if it's our sickness that surrounds us or the bills that we have to pay or the vehicles that we find ourselves in this morning. It's a challenge, can you say amen, to, to just get outside of that. But I encourage you where you are to just consider this morning all of the years we've been in church, all of the things we've heard, and it's come to this. What if this is the last service that we have an opportunity to be in? What if this was the last message that this community would hear this morning? God's put us out here in front of the open air. Hallelujah. No building surrounding us. No ceiling that blocks us. And if we'll enter in this morning, every usher, hallelujah, every member this morning, every camera worker this morning and sound member, and I assure you that he'll come to where you are, hallelujah. He'll go into the car and meet your need. Do you believe it this morning? I ask you this morning. I wonderfully ask you this morning to enter in and lift your hands and ask him to come because he is here.
clap offering of praise this morning, church. Give him your best clap offering of praise. Hallelujah. You know, in times like these, you just got to stand upon what you know. Hallelujah. To go beyond what you feel and to know what you know this morning. The promises of God are sure and they're amen. Hallelujah. And they're for you and I this morning. Help us sing this morning. Standing on the promises of Christ.
won't you give him your best praise this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is never late, church. I know some social security checks came late this week. I know folks are waiting for stimulus checks to come. And it may seem that at the end of the month, our ears may not meet. But God is faithful. Can you say amen? He's here this morning to prove to you that he's always on time. Hallelujah. Because he's an old time God. Can you say amen?
blow your horns or something out there. I can't see you through the tent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you believe he's an all-time God? Hallelujah. Some of y'all quiet today. You, you can't run. Amen. You need to flash your lights or something. Let us know you're in there. Glory. Praise God. Amen. Where can you go but to the Lord today? Is there a government that can help you? Some of us are looking to the princes and the kings and the presidents. But where can you go? under that load and he will co-bear that load with you. Amen. 
It's our cross to bear. Amen. But he's going to get up under that load and walk there with you. Do you believe it this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Help us sing this song this morning.
Hallelujah. This is the time you should blow your horns. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a day of singing. Glory. What a day of shouting. Hallelujah. Is heaven in view this morning? Are you looking towards heaven this morning? Are we longing in our heart, sick in our stomach to see Christ this day? Hallelujah. See the bright light shine. Thank you, Jesus. Here in just a moment, our ushers are going to come and make their way through the parking lot uh, as we receive our morning tithe and offering. I do want to say to the church a, a, a heartfelt, a sincere thank you. You've been so faithful in the giving of tithe and offering in these days that we haven't been congregating together as usual. And we thank you. 
as uh, continuing to meet the needs of the church. And uh, we pray the Lord bless you abundantly as always. That is our prayer. And uh, as I said momentarily ago, uh, these gentlemen, they'll be coming. They'll just come to the driver's side window as they make their way through and just make that as easy and as uh, painless as possible. And so anyway, as the singers get ready to sing, we're just going to pray the Lord bless you as you give as unto the Lord. Father, I pray today, bless your people. I thank you for your faithfulness. And I thank you that you've met every need, that you've supplied. You've made a way when there seems to be no way. And Lord, today we understand we cannot outgive you. And Lord, I pray that you would bless your people. I thank you for reports of the fact that there are many who are still continuing to work, still very busy. There's still the, the blessing and, the, and the, the streams, amen, of provision that are flowing into households. I pray that you would continue to bless your church, your people. We know you will because your word says you will. And Father, I praise you today. Meet the needs of the house. Lord, we thank you today. We give you glory. May the Lord bless you as you give. Gentlemen, if you will, come. Singers, if we can sing another song as they worship.
Hallelujah. I'm glad today we can trust him. Amen. We can leave everything right there at his feet. As Brother Roderick already said earlier, he bears our burdens. We can cast our cares upon him. This morning, just before we get into the word of the Lord today, I do want to just remind the church of some prayer requests and some needs that we would like to share with you as we continue to pray for folks that have been on our list and various needs that have been represented. I would ask this morning you'd continue to remember the Hoffman family. We had, I spoke with Sister Hoffman yesterday and uh, they are uh, still forging ahead with treatments, but some of that has been tentative and some of the follow-ups have, have slowed down, of course, as a result of the virus. But let's continue to remember Brother Willie Hoffman. I know that he would uh, appreciate that. She said they appreciate the prayers of the church more than you know. And many of you have contacted and called and prayed with them. And, and so continue to do that. And we also want to continue to remember Sister Dolores Burnett. Let's continue to lift her up in prayer for touching her body, Sister Rivier. We also, uh, I'm glad she's here this morning, Sister Karen Brashear, and uh, she's healing up from her fall. She still has some uh, uh, bruises, but she's here. But we're continuing to remember you, Sister Karen, and we're going to pray the Lord just continue to strengthen her and touch her in body. This morning, Sister Owens, just a special need represented. Uh, and just unspoken at this time, but the Lord knows. But we want to remember this need. Uh, also, we want to continue to remember uh, all of our health care workers, these folks that are, are right here. I know this term's been used a lot lately, but they're on the front lines. Many folks that are putting in a lot of hours. We have a lot of people uh, here out of the Victor Temp Temple family that are involved in the medical field. And uh, I know some that uh, even today they are working in some of the COVID-19 units helping them. And so we want to pray. Pray the Lord put a hedge around them. Pray the Lord bless them. And my prayer has also been what a wonderful door and opportunity for those that are spirit-filled believers, the power of God working in their lives, that they can be an example and a witness to so many that are coming through uh, our hospitals, also our law enforcement and different ones. I, I, I pray the Lord, we just want to pray the Lord bless and keep them. And uh, we also always remembering our nation, our leaders from the White House down here to our local uh, cities and counties, just praying God give wisdom and direction. And uh, naturally uh, remembering different ones who are affected by this virus. I do. We mentioned Wednesday night, and I want to say again, Sister Gail James, her brother in Philadelphia, uh, has the virus, and we want to remember. I know that there's been some uh, who may be by way of a distance that some know of uh, upon jobs and or people that they work with who have been diagnosed with the virus, and we want to be praying. We want to be believing the Lord on behalf of these needs. Uh, we would like to remember uh, this morning... Uh, Sister uh, Brenda Turnage's brother, is that right? Is Larry? Uh, Larry in, in prayer. Uh, got word yesterday that he went to uh, the hospital, had been having some uh, chest pains. Uh, now, the last report that he was feeling some better, is there? Yes, they received it overnight last Thursday. Okay. They were doing blood work and they had All right. So Larry has been, they, they, they were going to hold him overnight running some tests, but we do want to be praying for Larry today and this uh, situation in regards to his heart. Amen. I know all of us have lost loved ones we're praying for. I know, and can I say, I pray that the church, that this is a time, let those prayers be intensified. Let this be a time where we're reaching, amen, because hearts are tender. People are paying attention. They're recognizing uh, and uh, so we want to be we want to be praying. I have spoken with several families who have reported and said we've got loved ones. They are calling, asking questions, asking for prayer. God's dealing with hearts. 
And so let's be remembering our loved ones uh, as we pray. But I know that there are many needs represented. And I'm going to ask you folks right there, why don't we bow our heads together? And we just want to pray this morning. Ask the Lord to minister and move on behalf of these requests here today. Father, we thank you and glorify you. I thank you, Lord, today that we have the privilege to pray. Lord, this morning we are not stopped to communicate with you. Lord, your ears open. Your your touched and moved with the feelings of our infirmities. And Lord, I pray this morning for these needs that are represented. We ask and pray that you would minister and move through and by your power. Lord, we pray for these lives today that need a touch and need healing. We pray for the Hoffman family, Brother Willie Hoffman. Lord, this cancer diagnosis in his lungs, I pray that you would touch continue to do a work. Keep your hands upon them. We pray this morning for Larry. We ask God that you would touch him, that you would move in his body. We pray, Father, that you would do a work. Father, as, as these tests are being run, I ask, oh God, that you would continue to bring healing for Sister Karen Brashear. Continue to touch her, Lord. Bring healing to her body. I pray for Sister Owens this morning, the needs represented in her life. Even now, Lord, we're agreeing together in faith. Lord, asking for you to touch, to move and minister. Oh, Lamb of God, thank you for your healing virtue. Thank you for your power. We pray today, Lord, for our nation and our leaders. We pray for many who are battling this virus. We pray today for our health care workers, Lord, those that are right here on the front lines and Paul in the middle of this pandemic. I pray a hedge of protection. I pray God to bless. Move and minister, Lord, through by your power. Father, convict hearts and lives of our lost loved ones, those God, who I believe it's evident you're stirring and dealing with hearts. Lord, we believe it is here revived. seen as never before. God, let our hearts be broken for those that are lost. Lord, we're trusting you today. We're believing you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Meet the needs today. Meet the needs today. You're our way maker. Miracle worker.
miracle worker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you appreciate these folks, won't you honk and tell them you love them and you're thankful for them. The sun has come out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you're going to see me preach with one eye open as I squint a little bit. I hope Amen. Notes. Somebody used to say, there's the old terminology, sleep with one eye open. I'm going to preach with one eye open. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we appreciate, we appreciate you being here this morning and coming out into this parking lot amen to worship the Lord together oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. I'm thankful my prayer is pardon me for a moment I'm trying to brighten this thing up where I can see in this sunlight we uh Praise the Lord. But let me say again, we appreciate you coming out and being with us here in the parking lot. Like I said, when all of this had begun, one of the things that I was uh, had been anticipating, I said, if this thing goes into Easter for sure, I wanted to be able to have a drive-in service for our Easter uh, service. And I thought this would be a, thank you, brother. I thought this would be a good opportunity to go ahead this first Sunday of uh, the month of April here, and uh, go ahead, be a good trial run, amen, make sure how everything's been working and setting up, and I want to say a great big thank you, I've had some folks who have been laboring, uh, not just this morning, but this has been a few days of, of preparation, amen. I know that Brother Corey, Brother Danny, Brother Casey, Brother Ben, uh, they have been up here uh, going through this sound equipment and, and getting everything together and working so very hard. And yes. we appreciate these men, our singers and musicians coming up, practicing, getting ready. And so it is a work in progress, but we're so thankful uh, for God's blessing and we're thankful for everybody's help. This doesn't happen automatically. I don't just say, well, how about we do this and it all just automatically show up. There's people who's willing to invest some time and energy and uh, we appreciate uh, those of you who've been doing that to make this possible. Next Sunday, we're going to do the same thing at 11 o'clock Easter Sunday morning. Come be with us. And uh, we do anticipate some, uh, some more vehicles that day. And uh, so we encourage you to come get you a place to park. And, uh, of course, on Wednesday nights at 7, we're live streaming our services. And uh, encourage you to tune in and join with us. Uh, so glad to hear many of you saying we've been watching every week that all of this has been going on. And so we're thankful for that. And I want to say again, we appreciate so many of you being faithful in your giving, uh, whether online, mailing in, coming by the offices on designated days and times. And again, we just pray the Lord bless you. And so thank you for everything that's been done. And to the best of all of our ability, we have just been keeping church life uh, going and the ministry just going as best as possible. And uh, we appreciate everybody being willing to do their part and, uh, and helping out in these endeavors. Amen. Well, uh, this afternoon, we've transitioned from morning to afternoon, but we're going to get here into the Word of the Lord this morning. I'm going to ask you if you have your Bibles or using your phone or iPad, uh, turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter number 1. Joshua, chapter number 1, where we're going to be reading in verses number 2 and 3. And then I'm going to have you to scroll over or turn over to Joshua 3 
here just momentarily. So keep your place marked there as we're going to be looking at a couple of these passages of Scripture. Amen. And uh, both see, here look and, and see what the Lord has challenged our hearts with today. Amen. Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to start reading in verse number 2. The Bible here declares, it says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Yeah. In chapter 3, verse number 3, the Bible says, And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye, ye have not passed this way heretofore. As we look at these scriptures this morning, we find as to where the children of Israel and Joshua are on the premise. They are days away from stepping into the promised land. The very place that God had promised and had been reminding his people of. Moses had been talking about and these leaders had been reminding the people to keep their heart and their vision upon where God was taking them to. In this we find that here on the cusp of going into this promised land, there are some uncertainties. There are some doubts. There are some questions. And we're going to be looking at, at that in just a moment. But this morning, for the sake of a title and for the sake of a thought, something that the Lord has been challenging my heart with was this phrase because Joshua in chapter 3 gives commandment to the children of Israel that they are to stay behind the Ark of the Covenant, to follow after that Ark and to keep distance so that they might see where that Ark is going. He said, because you have never been this way before. And this morning with the Lord's help, I want to preach for a few moments on that thought. We have never been this way before. Right. Amen. Amen. We've never been this way before. If you were to have told me four weeks ago that we would be out here in our cars in this parking lot, that we would be having an outdoor service like this, yeah. I would have said you're crazy. Because we've never been this way before. Yeah. Right. If you were to have told me in that same time frame that Brother Jacob, you will be spending the next several Sundays and Wednesdays preaching to empty church pews. Wow. Hey Amen. I would have said that's nonsense. The church has always shown up and hungry and ready. But can I tell you, here we are. Yeah. We've never been this way before. Well, if you would have told me that the streets of our major metropolises, New York City, yeah. Los Angeles, Houston, Texas, Dallas, Texas, yeah. New York, New Jersey, the list can go on and on and on, that folks would be in their homes, yeah. that the streets would be quiet, that the stores would be closed, on, that jobs would be, that, that within weeks there would be mass unemployment. Yeah. I would have said there's no way. We've never seen a better economy. We've never seen more money flowing through this nation like yeah. we have. Yeah. People are hustling and bustling. I would have said you're crazy. Yeah. But here we are. Yeah. We've never been yeah. this way before. Okay. Oh, can I tell you this morning, church, that in this day and time and what we're looking at, I know there are some as to where there is fear, where some there are questions. 
questions where some there are concerns and can I say that even though we are in unprecedented times yeah. even though we are in situations we've never been in before I was just talking to my uncle just yesterday and at the conclusion of our conversation I said to him brother Roderick I said I can tell you this we might be in situations we've never seen before oh. but for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ I believe these are exciting days in which to live because we are on the brink we are on the cusp I believe we as God's people are getting ready to step on into the promised land I believe we're getting ready to see everything we've dreamed of everything we've sung about everything we've preached about every prayer we've prayed every way we served. Can I tell you heaven is a reality. The promise of God. The promised land I believe is just in sight. Right here. Right here on the cusp. Right here at the place. The old song said I can see the lights of home. Hallelujah. I believe as we're running in this last mile we find as Israel is at a place, the introduction to Joshua does not seem very promising. It says there, Brother Torbert, at the very beginning, here is the grim reminder. It said, Moses, my servant, is dead. That's right. And for those they had been with Moses for a generation, 40 plus years, they had seen as God spoke to Moses, directed Moses. He was the mouthpiece of God. Yeah. He, they had seen great miracles worked in the wilderness, all of these things, but God had taken care of Moses. Yeah. God had buried Moses. He was now gone. Yeah. And we find this young leader, Joshua, standing before the people on the precipice of going into that land that's been yeah. promised yeah. and everybody's saying what do we do we've never been in this situation yeah. we've never been in this particular dynamic here we are we've heard about it we see all of this we remember Moses saying we've watched a generation die off and here we are here we stand yeah. what are we going to do even Joshua himself oh. I believe was disturbed he was discouraged he didn't know what to do. And you'd say, well, that doesn't make sense, Brother Jake. He was a great leader of Israel. But you'll find in chapter 1 that on a few different occasions, right there in chapter 1, yeah. he speaks to Joshua and says, be strong and of good courage. Amen. Take heart. He reminded him, said, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Every place your foot walks, I'm going to give it to you. Just like I said to Moses oh can I tell you this morning church I know we're sitting in our vehicles I know everything's different I know some would say it's a grim forecast but can you hear the word of the Lord say be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid as the Lord went before those who are our forefathers of the faith right now in 2020 we still serve a risen Ooh, Savior. Yeah. We're still serving oh, the one God. that leads the way. Yeah. Don't let your heart be troubled. Oh, oh but we're going to trust him. Yeah. We're going to forge oh, ahead. Yes, he had told him, he said, oh, listen. Yes, amen. He said, there's a promise. You don't have to be afraid. Come on. You don't have to fear. He said, but we're going to give you some instruction. Oh, understand, they had been in that desert for 40 years wandering. Mm -hmm. 40 in Scripture is a number that represents trial. It is a number that represents testing. During this troubling time, our nation, the world has literally been brought to its knees. Yes. We've preached about it. We've heard the old timers talk about a day that would come. Yes. But here we are, this world, our nation, this state, our communities, everybody has had a place, amen, a prayer of testing and trial. Some would say, how long is it going to last? We don't know. There's no 
sure or firm answers. But I will say this. Is that in the midst of trial and testing. In the midst of enduring the storm. As it's been mentioned this morning. That in uncertain times. And in uncertain situations. Can I tell you. We know the world. From this moment is going to change. It has changed. And will continue to change. But I'll tell you what will not change. What will not change is the word of God. It is forever settled in heaven. That Fox News report will change. Your uh, newspaper will have a new story every week. But glory be to God. His word is forever settled in heaven. His promise remains. And in times of trial testing. I'm glad we can stand yeah. on the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We can stand on the word of God yes, amen. in the period of trial and testing, in the period of uncertainty, we find God's word to the people. Listen to this. There in Joshua, he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Brother Torbert, but I'm glad the story didn't stop there. Right. He gave encouragement. Listen, he said, now therefore arise right. and go over this Jordan. Yeah. Thou and all of this people unto the land which I shall give to them. Can I say to you this morning, I believe that for the church, I was reading in Isaiah last night where the word of the Lord came to that prophet and he declared to Israel, he said, Arise and shine for thy light has come. Can I tell somebody in this time of trial and testing, in times of uncertainty, I assure you the church that God's coming back for is not backed into a corner somewhere yeah. wringing her hands we're not stuck sucking our thumbs and crying over what we can't change but we're serving a God who says get up from where you are arise somebody's going to cross that river somebody's going to cross that Jordan somebody's going to step into the promises of God why not it be us why not it be God's people arise and go forward, cross all over, yeah. amen, into the place where God is calling us to. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, there is a renewed vigor and excitement in my soul. Yeah. Oh, can I tell you what our forefathers dreamed of, of being a part of the rapture generation. Yeah. I believe we're living it. Yeah. I believe we're a part of it. Oh. I believe we're going to be with those. Arise and go. We need to be marching. Yes. By divine order. Come on. So that we may ask, will you go with us? Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Will you go with us? Yeah. The world is looking around. The world is stumbling and fumbling yeah. around. Yeah. Groping in darkness. Saying, where do we go? What do we do? What's going to transpire? And can I say, as God has given the church his marching orders, yeah. that we ought to look to those in the highways and the hedges in the byways and be able to declare to the world, World. Come and go with yeah. us. We're crossing the river. Come and go with us. We're standing on the promises of God. Come and go with us and see what God will do. Oh, I believe. I believe there's a mandate. I believe there's a mandate for the church. We're holding on to exceeding great and precious promises. Joshua 1, 8 and... Nine says, he told, the Lord told Joshua, said, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have, I, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Yes. And will go with thee whithersoever thou goest. Joshua 
Verse 16, it says the people answered Joshua saying, All that thou commanded us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Can I tell you this morning, church, I'm not asking you to beat to the drum of the White House. I'm not asking you to march to the beat of the drum of popular opinions of the world today. But can I tell you, we have his word, as I've said. We have been given the orders. We've been given the promise that even in time of trial and testing is that we can take that word and we need a people. If we're going to cross the river, if we're going to stand on the promises of God, we're going to have to have some people with a mind made up that would say, Lord, whatever you say, that's what we're going to do. Wherever you lead the way, that's where we're going to go. Thank God that no matter the virus, no matter Wall Street, no matter the job forecast, no matter barren shelves, we keep on marching. We keep on adhering. We keep on preaching. We keep on praying. And we keep doing what God called us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this morning, church, that in times in all of us, not even just in these moments, but in various times, there's going to be moments we don't know what to do. That's right. And a wise man of God told me, he said, when you don't know what to do, you just keep doing what you know to do. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. You just keep doing what you know to do. Keep doing what's right. The people declared. They said, we're going to go where you say to go. We're going to do what you've said to do. The Lord said, if you would adhere to the word, if it won't depart from your mouth, if you'll meditate on it, keep it in front of your eyes and on your mind and on your heart, he said, then you'll have success. Then you'll prosper. Then you're going to be blessed. He's going to see to it. Amen. As he will honor his word. Yes. They would inherit that which was foretold. The promised land in this particular scripture, it was days away wow. from becoming a reality. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They were going to cross that river. It was the 41st year. And if you read through the history books, you'll come to find that all of this was happening right about four days before Passover. And as we celebrate this Easter time, yeah. can I tell you this morning, here we are, and we've been talking about and preaching about the blood, yeah. preaching about that Passover, preaching about the cross. And can I tell you, wouldn't it be wonderful, hey man, as we step through the portals of glory, yeah. wouldn't it be wonderful as to know we're right here on the precipice, yeah. right here on the cusp, hey man, of inheriting all that God has said. But while we wait for that day, yeah. I want to remind you, your church that even on this side of heaven even in the midst of this trial even in the midst of uncertainty we are a people holding on to the promise we are a people that will say God we're going to trust your word in the process and we're going to claim what is rightfully ours yes, hallelujah at this time in the 41st year that they were going to go, I want you to understand when they looked at that Jordan River, it was overflowing out of the banks. Wow. This was during barley season, and rains were exceptionally heavy. Can I tell you that at times when God brings you to a river, when God brings you to times of trial and testing, when you're in places you've never been before, it might seem like crossing over is insurmountable. Come on. They were looking there and maybe in their minds they thought, well, you know, if the Jordan was normally the way it's supposed to, we could yeah. see it. But here it was overflowing. Right. Here it was spreading out everywhere. What's it going to do? Have it been in a place? Are you in a place today in heart and mind where you'd say, Brother Jake, my mind and my emotions are overflowed. All the worries tend to overflow me. All of these things tend to overflow. Oh, but can I tell you, is that in these moments where there is insurmountable situations and it seems like the path is unclear or the way uncrossable. God is not left without a plan and God is not left without a purpose. God spoke to Joshua and he said, you tell everybody to get themselves ready. You tell everybody to sanctify themselves. You tell everybody make preparation because we're going to see our way out of here. I don't care how deep the waters 
are. I don't care what the forecast is. God said my glory is going to make a way. And I'm going to lead you through. Hallelujah. Into the promises of God. Oh, we can be at a place where it seems as all of these things are all around us. Insurmountable, as I said. But understand, there is a call. There's a call before we cross that river that we sanctify ourselves. Joshua 3 and 5 said, And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. That term sanctify, to put it in present day terminology, it was a preparation and cleansing. Yeah. It was to set themselves apart. Yeah. I want to tell you, church, the Lord is trying to get our attention. Yeah. He is trying to deal with our hearts. Yeah. And let me be counted amongst the preachers and pulpits that will tell a world in their church yeah. that we must repent, yeah. that we must be washed in the blood, yeah. that we must be made right with God. If we're going to cross the river, Brother Blue, if we're going to inherit the promise. We're going to do it by way of the blood. We're going to be way to do it by way of the door, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's still the way. He's still the truth. And he's still the life. Sanctify yourselves. Church, if there's ever been, I believe, a window of mercy, we're looking at it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're looking at it. If there's ever been a time where God's trying to shake, what can be shaken? It's now. And it's not because he's a bully in heaven looking over the corridors of heaven laughing at us. No. But he's saying, I'm trying to wake you up. I'm trying to get you ready. I'm trying to call the church out of lackadaisical living, out of half-hearted service, out of quieted prayers to where we are fervent again, where we are serious again. Lord, sanctify our hearts. Challenge our lives. Lives. Let us be ready to inherit the promise. Oh, let me say this morning that when we look at this, understand the call to repentance, the calls. I've been excited as you look over social media, at least amongst the friends that are on my friends list and in my news feed. The gospel's everywhere. Yes, sir. There's somebody singing, somebody preaching, yes, sir. some service live streaming, yes, children's ministries reaching children. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on. oh, we're at a time, I'm telling you, it's yeah. a window of mercy. Yeah. What it is is God saying, sanctify yes, yourself. Yes, oh, God, let there be a great awakening. Let there be a revival. Yeah. Can I tell you, we have our ideas of revival, packed out churches, right. loud music, everything's hitting and firing on all the right cylinders, yeah. red hot fire breathing preaching. We think and associate with revival, but I believe God's showing us what revival is. Oh, when we are broken down to our knees, yeah. when we repent of our sin, yeah. when we come to a quiet place with God, yeah. shut ourselves in his presence, tune everything else out. Uh -huh. That's where revival is birthed yeah. in our hearts and in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody honk Hallelujah. if you love Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never before did that old bumper sticker ring true. Come on, somebody. Amen. When we look at this, we find a call to sanctify and then we come to find there is an admonition of how to cross that river, of how to go through that trial, of how to inherit God's best. Help us, Lord. He said, you're going to have to follow the ark. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. You're going to have to follow the ark. Joshua spake in Joshua 3 and 6. He spake unto the priest saying, take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. Yeah. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. I want to pause right there. Symbolically, we know that it was only the priest who had the authority or the permission to bear the presence of the Lord. But can I remind 
church and here we are and the, this new covenant this dispensation of grace and the word of God has called us brother Andrew as kings and priests and can I remind you church at the end of the day when the world's scratching their heads saying I guess it didn't matter the lights and the fog I guess it didn't matter how many hot dog suppers we had I guess it didn't matter all the programs we had I guess it didn't matter all the big to do's we were doing but when we get down to it let the church be the church we're called to be the priests I don't want them saying about Victory Temple oh look at the building look at the property look at this and look at that I want them to see a church that's bearing the presence of God I want them to see a church and a people that would say if you want to have an encounter with God let it be experienced here we're going to be a people raising the bloodstained banner we're going to be a church that is lifting up the presence of the Lord hallelujah I want to remind you this morning everything else pairs, pales in comparison to the presence of God. Yes, Nothing amen. else truly matters. No, and I believe as a part of God getting our attention, He's reminding churches of that very fact. That's right. Come on here. Lord. Who would have ever dreamed if we were just to do something like this on the spur of the moment? There wouldn't be half the people that are here today. That's right. Because you would have said, we could take it or leave it. Why are we going to sit in a parking lot? Yeah, but you know what this represents? Yeah. There's people that are saying, I'm hungry. Yeah. There's people that are saying, I realize I miss the fellowship. Yeah. There's people that are saying, I realize the necessity of the church. Yeah. Everything this place, this foundation has been built upon. The word of God, the power of God, yeah. the spirit of God at work. Yeah. It has now come to fruition for yeah. such a time as this. Oh, I believe the church and you and I have been called into the kingdom yeah. for such a time as this. Yeah. Let's bear the ark. Yeah. Let's lift up the name of Christ. Oh, Let's promote Pentecost yeah. in a day and time where there are people people who are hurting people that need something more you, than entertainment yes, sir. people that need something more than a program yes, sir. oh God help us, help us Lord. when we look at this the word of God says this thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant saying when ye are come to the brink of the water of the Jordan I want you to catch this ye shall stand still in Jordan that's right Brother Roderick, what that lets me know, even though they were bearing the ark, and even though those people were going to go over into dry, on dry ground, right. that church was represented. You're going to stand right in the middle, right in the middle. of those waters. Hallelujah. You're going to stand right in the middle of the trial and the testing. Yeah. You're going to stand right in the middle of the place. Yeah. Come on here, that's overflowing. And you don't know exactly what's going on. But what they didn't know is they were holding on to the most powerful thing yeah. on the face of the earth. Yeah. They were holding on to the presence and the power of oh God. My. And I'm going to tell you, here we are on this April Sunday oh. in 2020. Let me remind you of this. We're standing in the midst of trial. Yeah. We're standing in the midst of uncertainty. But God said uh, somebody's got to stand yeah. in that river. Yeah. Somebody's got to bear the presence yeah. of the Lord right in the middle Hallelujah. of what's going on. Hallelujah. The Word of God reminds us you, that once those priests stood in that river, that it began to stand up upon itself. Yes, it says it shall come to pass, verses 13 and 14, it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, yes. the Lord of all the earth, the shall rest in the waters of Jordan, yes. that the waters of Jordan will be cut off yes. from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people. Oh, can I tell you, we need to be carrying that Ark so that others see. Yes, we need sir. to be ready to cross that Jordan. Yeah. Can I tell you, some would say, how are we going to do 
it, Brother Jacob. I don't have a quick fix or a little uh, cute little program or plan to tell you, but I'll tell you what this preacher believes. It will not be by might nor by power, but it'll be by his spirit. It'll be by the hand of Almighty God. He said, cross over, sanctify yourselves, get ready, because you're going to see God do wonders Hallelujah. in your midst. Wonders. I don't know about you, church. We've never been this way before. But I believe that we at Victory Temple, I believe that we as God's people, we need to keep our eyes on the ark. We need to keep on following. Preacher, what you going to do during COVID-19? What you going to do when they won't let you folks get in the church house? Brother Torbert, I'm going to keep my eyes on the ark. Yes, Mom and Daddy, what you going to do when you're laid off from the job? What you going to do when the kids are inside? What you going to do in these situations? Let our response be, we've never been this way before, but we're going to keep our eyes on the ark. We're going to follow the presence of God. And He's going to lead us through into a place oh, that we've yet seen, that we've yet discovered. Music, if you would come. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, not by might. Nor by power. Matter of fact, I don't know, singers, we ought to sing that one. Not by might. Nor by power. Oh, that's fine, too. That's fine. Amen. I'll let the music leader take care of that. Hallelujah. No, that's fine. Church, I tell you, we ain't in this thing by ourselves. We ain't in these uncertain times trying to navigate with just, well, we'll see what happens. There's a God in heaven who knows. There's a God in heaven who's called us. He said, arise, get yourself up, sanctify yourself, follow the ark. And cross over that Jordan. Cross over that place. And so I want to challenge you, Victory Temple family. I want to challenge you. Let's keep on marching. Brother Heath, let's keep on marching. Yes, sir. Brother Drew, let's keep on marching. Brother Josh, let's keep on marching. Brother Chris, let's keep on marching. Hallelujah. We're going to follow the presence of the Lord. We're going to stand. Even when we've never been this way before. Somebody honk right there in your cars one more time. things. Our ushers are going to be helping you to leave the parking lot. I am asking, please do not come up and congregate. Even our singers and musicians, you can consider yourselves dismissed. 
I have a, just a handful of men who'll be putting everything up that'll have it ready to be having it ready for next Sunday. Next Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, 11 a.m., come out here in the parking lot. We're going to be serving that risen Savior. He's alive and well. When you leave the parking lot today, on your way out, I want you to honk your horn. Let everybody know you love them. Wave at everybody. And God bless you. We love you. Wednesday night at 7.